it's the Ken Dodd Show. Here he comes, flashing to the front with a fun flag flying freely, a fine figure of a frisky fellow full of furious fun, phenomenal philosophies, and Biggie Oggy, Ben Ford. I mean, Ken Dodd. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to say how tickled I am. I would like to say what great pleasure it gives me. Just and a wonderful one moment, feeling please. of plumpness. Eh? Ken Dodd. Huh? This is your life. Hey? What's going on? Kenneth Arthur Clarence Toby Dodd. <laughs> you began your education at the age of four at the Naughty Ash Kindergarten. You left there when you were 18. Hey, what do you want to tell him that for? Tell him about how I was at Naughty Ash University. I was coming to that. <laughs> you left the university with a BA. I fell off the bell tower. <laughs> On leaving university, you spent four very happy years in Walton Jail. Ah, oh, shut up. <laughs> then came the dark years. Yes, then I had my hair cut. <laughs> 1940. War came, and like the man you are, you took out German naturalization papers. <laughs> Never mind that. Tell him about how I was a cockleshell hero. How I stood on the cliffs at Dover, throwing cockle shells at the planes. <laughs> Tell them how I went out spying every night. <laughs> I still do. <laughs> I'll be getting caught one of these nights. No, what about the time I put the incendiary bomb out in me pyjamas? <laughs> Good job I did that. <laughs> and now, for the real surprise, flown here all the way from Australia, someone whom you haven't seen for 15 years, your brother, Phil Dodd. <laughs> Watch your sport. My, you would have thought that after all these years, you and me would have... Hey, 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 who's he? Your brother, Phil Dodd. My brother's name's Bill Dodd, not Phil Dodd. Oh, dear. <laughs> it's been a slight... Uh, somebody sl <laughs> Was the script late? <laughs> well, Ken Dodd, this was your life, and you'll have to pay his fare back to Australia. Oh, well, I'm, I'm not... No, 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 Your life? Uh, I've never been so surprised in all me dicky mint. <laughs> it's like William Shakespeare said, there is a tide in the affairs of men which, taken at the flood, leads on to fortune. So, to the lot of you. I say, are you there? Yes. I'm going to need him in Suffolk tonight. Yes, it gets very nippy out in the outback. <laughs> you silly old twazer. Silly old twazer? I'll get my own back. By Joe, what a beautiful day for trimming those little ears that grow out your ears. <laughs> I think, I think I'll go and have a word with this constable on point duty. Good constanoon, after all. Uh, not just now, if you don't mind, sir. I'm directing the traffic. Well, well, I just wanted to say, constable, I wanted to congratulate you on your fitness. Oh, thank you, sir. What a magnificent specimen you look. Oh. Well, what sort of exercises do you do, constable, to be like that? Ah, oh, well, sir, now, this is the one I find most beneficial. Both arms out, like this. Oh, then see. raise them above your head, oh. so. Then the right arm out, and the left arm out, like so. Hi, <laughs> 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 Joe. <laughs> I wonder whose wick I can get on next. <laughs> no, I'll behave myself. Ah, uh, look at that poor old man trying to get across the road. I'll go and help him across. Come on, Pop. You're a bit old to be dodging in and out of this traffic, aren't you? Yes, I'm a, I'm a hundred in. Hundred in two. Oh, Ned. A hundred and two? Yes. Where are you off to, then? The other, other side of the road. Oh, old Ned. I'm going to see me fiancé. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't seen me fiancé for... 87 years. <laughs> it's just as well, too, the condition you're in. <laughs> this must be a wonderful moment for you, Pop. Yes, I've waited 87 years for this moment. I'll, I'll knock at the... I'll knock at the... the, the ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a shame. <laughs> you know... What a shame. I had a feeling he was going to be thwarted. <laughs> Well, what do you know? Did you know that in Egypt, peeping toms are known as Mustafa Deco? <laughs> well, what do you know? Did you know that the first prize at a Dundee fancy dress ball was won by a Highlander who put his kilt on upside down and went as a table lamp? 
Well, what do you know? Did you know that Judith Chalmers is looking very pleased with herself? And why not? Because it's my very pleasant duty to introduce our guests for this week. Those three misses who always make a hit, the Barry Sisters. <laughs> Have you tried Supreme Peas yet? <laughs> They're very good, and, and I should know, because I grow them myself. I get them all over me chest, me arms, down me back, all over me legs. Oh, blimey. Phew. Oh, well, I'll try this out. What a job. Dotty, the Dotty White Man. What is it? What do you want? Uh, good, good morning, madam. May I do your whole family's wash for the next three weeks? Oh, certainly. Yes, come in. You certainly can. Uh, uh, no, 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 I'll come back next week. I'll, I'll... What is a mother-in-law? <laughs> a mother-in-law is that kindly, middle-aged lady who comes to see you every Sunday <laughs> to ask how a nice girl like her lovely daughter ever got snarled up with a yobbo like you. <laughs> a mother-in-law never interferes when her daughter and son-in-law are having a row. She just sits there quietly in the background, oiling her rifle. <laughs> a mother-in-law is often the butt of unwarranted jokes made by comedians of low taste. These men receive a lot of money for this. Thank you. <laughs> and when a young married couple have their first tiff, even though she lives miles away, a mother-in-law hears of it, and common sense tells her not to interfere. However, she smiles quietly, puts her hat and coat on, opens the front door, and... Geronimo! <laughs> Hello, all you nature lovers. This, this is your old bird-watching chum, Ivor Wagtail. I'll not keep you a minute. I'm, I'm just putting a, a few bits of stale bread and bacon rind out for the wife. There we are. That should shut her up. Now, you don't need me to tell you 
No nature lover needs to be told of the great joy to be had from watching the many delightful ways of our little feathered friends. I always remember my old dad saying to me, and he was a keen ornithologist, he said to me, get out into the woods, son, and see if there's any sign of your mother. <laughs> the lady next door got me out of bed last night. No, I mean, she knocked at our front door. My dear wife said, who can that be? And I said, perhaps your mother's home early from the TA. <laughs> She's in the Territorial Army, her mother. She's a roadblock. <laughs> anyway, I, I dashed downstairs and it was the lady from next door. Oh, what shall I do, she said. I said, what's happened? She said, me budgie's flown up the chimney. I thought, what a terrible thing to happen to anybody at this time of night. I tried everything to get that bird down. In the end, I got the poor woman a chimney sweep. He doesn't sing as nicely as the budgie, but he's company for it. <laughs> well, I suppose I'd better be going, oh, good gracious me, well, would you believe that? Now, would you believe that this, this little bird, th th this little bird has just, just settled on my shoulder. <laughs> Hello, little chap. <laughs> I wonder what make he is. Uh, oh, oh, it's a meadow pipit. Yes, there's no doubt about it. It's a me meadow pipit. Uh, here, what the, oh, oh, hey, my head. Oh, it's a flipping woodpecker. Here, go on, you multi old crow. Go on, get off me. Go on, go on, get off me. The exclusive restaurant. Hmm. 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 He's a magnificent chef de cuisine. Oh, superb. Mm. Delicious. Hmm. Mm. It's amazing when you realize he's short of breath in both his kneecaps. <laughs> Poor chap. Mm. Yeah. Oh, this is really delicious. Mm. Mm. Very delicious. It's surprising what he can do with a nutmeg. <laughs> he's got a diploma for his dumplings. <laughs> They usually bring his hors d'oeuvres round on a trolley. <laughs> you can pick where you like. Can you really? What a splendid idea. That's his mother. That's his mother at the next table. Oh. She's got frog's legs. <laughs> what a strange family. Oh, and that's his wife over there at the buffet, pouring gravy over his kidneys. <laughs> What a morbid sense of humour. Yes. Well, of course, she's a well-known gourmet. Oh, foreigners. <laughs> Why do they allow them in the country? She can't be much help to him. Oh, I don't know. He has three girls in the kitchen, peeling for him. <laughs> oh, I can't sit here and eat this after what you've just told me. I, I must leave. I'll come with you, Daphne. <laughs> lovers all over the world know, today sees the 600th anniversary of the birth of Sir Geoffrey Plonk, the man who invented the banjo. Hello, cheeky. Good gracious me, it's the old-time music hall star, Vesta Buell. Ha <laughs> ha, what have you got for us this week, Vesta? One of the good old ones, one of Kitty Mitties, famous for her saucy songs, one of Kitty Mitties' dirty ditties. Let's have it. It's called A Hollive, Some Hives, and a Hasperine. Good. A Hollive, Some Hives, and a Hasperine. That is my desire. A hollive, some ice, and some aspirin. Oh, look out, your shirt's on fire. Oh, a hollive and some ice. It should be very nice. Look out, your shirt's on fire. Don't forget the aspirin. Do you know where I went to the other day? Diddyland. You know, where all the little people live. And I travelled on a tiny little bus to Diddyland. There was Mr and Mrs Smalley waiting for me with their little Diddy children. It's Doddy. Three cheers for Doddy. Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! <coughs> Poor Mrs Smalley was having a terrible time of it, trying to keep the children quiet. Do you know what they call mothers in Diddyland? Minimums. <laughs> Minimums. Mr. Smalley showed me around his little diddy farm. These are my little diddy farm animals, Doddy. <laughs> and little diddy 
Granny was sitting on a matchbox, holding a thimble and milking a cow. <laughs> Hiya, Granny. How are you? Me feet are giving me jip. Giving me jip, me feet are. I'll have to have a sit down on this beef cube. <laughs> Who's this little old man with you? I'm their granddad. <laughs> You're standing on me beard, Daddy. <laughs> Is there a band in this place? No, but we have got a group. Listen to our group, Doddy. <laughs> Good gracious! That was the famous Diddy group, the Rolling Pebbles. <laughs> I'll have to go now. I'm off home on the back of this little Diddy's rocker's scooter. Tatty bye, Diddy people. See you next week. Tatty bye. <laughs> Where's me hanky? <laughs> Where's your what? Where's me hanky? I can't find it. I don't know. What do you want your hanky for? What do people usually want their hanky for? <laughs> I don't know. Haven't you ever had a hanky? Yes, here's my hanky. That's my hanky? No. Your hanky hasn't got holes in it like this one hangs. Has your hanky got holes in it? Yes. Ah. Can I have a go with your hanky? No. That's not nice using other people's hanky. Oh. Where's my hanky? Have you had a good look round for your hanky? Of course I'll have a good look round. I'm not soft. What? <laughs> what are you talking like that for? That what? Saying I'm not soft. <laughs> not soft. Not soft. <laughs> and I always say I'm not soft when I can't find my hanky. Are you stupid? Have you any good look in your back pocket? No, not yet. I'm having a rest. <laughs> well, have a good look in your back pocket then. I think I will. Where's my trousers? <laughs> Where do you want? Where's my trousers? Where's my shirt? Where's my shirt? Where's my shirt? Radio Air. Broadcasting on 15 microcycles. Here is the O News, and this is himself reading it. Kevin O'Doherty. In the Irish Parliament today, the Minister of Transport, Barmy Banyo, said that he decided against the plan to dig a tunnel under the Atlantic to link up with America. Said the Minister, where would we be after getting a shovel that long? <laughs> Later, there was continued interruptions from the member from Cork who kept popping up. <laughs> now here are two late racing results from the Curra. The 415, blow lamp, rear end, screeching molly. 4.45, short-sighted Sam, cliff top, cheerio. <laughs> now here is the weather forecast. Tonight it'll be very dark till the morning when it won't. <laughs> Radio Erin. We've got lots of darling songs on this show for you now. And sure it's time for pick of the pop. Be dad and it's the bumper bundle herself. <laughs> Judith Ochamas. It is so. Asking to hear Kevin O'Doddy singing Happiness. <laughs> Happiness, happiness, the greatest gift that I possess. I thank the Lord that I've been blessed with more than my share of happiness. To me, this world is a wonderful place. I'm the luckiest human in the human race. I've got no silver and I've got no gold, but I've got happiness in my soul. Happiness to me is an ocean tide, a sunset fading on a mountainside, a big old heaven full of stars above, when I'm in the arms of the one I love. Happiness, happiness, the greatest gift that I possess. I thank the Lord that I've been blessed with all in my share of happiness. Happiness is a field of grain, turning its face to the falling rain. 
I see it in the sunshine, breathe it in the air. Happiness, happiness everywhere. A wise old man told me one time, happiness is a frame of mind. When you go to measuring a man's success, don't count money, count happiness. Oh, happiness, happiness, the greatest gift that I possess. I thank the Lord that I've been blessed with more than my share of happiness. Sorry, but once again, it's time for Parade of the Flops, presented each week by those poor, unfortunate men who could never do a thing right, like Bert Dodson, the world's worst lifeguard. Help! No, I'm having me dinner. <laughs> Please, save me! I can't. Mm, ham rolls, mm, they're lovely. Looking delightful in his purple and white tights is Rudolf Doddier, the worst ever master of the ballet. Now look here, boys. <laughs> Watch how I do the splits. I haven't done splits for a long time, but it should be done in three stages, like so. One. <laughs> two. And three. <laughs> Listen now to the story concerning the worst ever policeman. Evening all. <laughs> yes, it's me, Dodson. PC George Dodson. I joined the constabulary ten years ago. At the time, it seemed a sensible thing to do, as the police were looking for me. <laughs> I never get lonely patrolling me beat at night because I've got Percy, the police dog, to keep me company. <laughs> Good old Percy. <laughs> He'd never leave his post. Just watch this. <laughs> Percy, what's one and one? I taught him that. <laughs> I continued my tour of duty, which took me past the vicarage, where they were holding the weekly mother's meeting. Everything's under control, officer, said the vicar, standing there in his vestry. <laughs> ah, good evening, Dodson. Oh, evening, Sarge. <laughs> sit, 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 sit. Not you, Sarge. Percy. Have <laughs> you anything to report, Dodson? Yes, I have, Sarge. Do you know that farm about a mile from here? Aye. Well, the farmer's wife's been complaining about clothes disappearing off the line. Ah, have you any ideas? Yes, I think it's the work of picnickers. Ha, ha, ha! Police concert. And I also saw an elderly gent across the road 17 times. 17 times? Then I found out his braces were caught round a traffic meter. <laughs> That's all you've done today. Oh, the trouble we're having in this area. And on top of everything, the greatest criminal mind of all time is operating in this area. I thought your wife was at her mother's. <laughs> oh, I mean the frog. The frog? Aye, the frog. I'll get after him now, Sarge, with the dog. I said the dog. <laughs> Dog. Do you know who's coming here this morning to help us? Inspector Lockhart. Ah, well, I hope he can find his way in the fog. I said the fog! <laughs> good evening, Sergeant. Good evening, Constable. I'm Yard out of the lock. We've received information that the frog is meeting his gang at a secret hideout to share the swag from their last job. Now, I've got a hunch. I thought you didn't look too good, sir. <laughs> You'd best be careful. There's a full moon tonight. What's that got to do with it? Oh, didn't you know? When the moon is full, the frog goes a bit, uh, you know. Rubbish. Hard work, careful deduction and observation is the only way to beat crime. Sherlock Holmes said that. And you cannot beat the man on the beat. <laughs> to the gang's hideout. Ooh, I can see right through the keyhole. Look at that fellow over there. Ugh. What a horrible clock. Broken nose, two cauliflower ears, no teeth. Oh, he looks a real batten. Look, he's getting his share of the payoff. Bless you, boy. <laughs> Bless all the gang. Slasher's going to say something. Now, you all know all the plans for our next job. All we got to do now is to wait for the arrival of the frog. The frog? Inspector, Inspector, he's coming here. We'll be able to nab him because it's the full moon tonight. I know. 
<laughs> I know. <laughs> and when he comes, I'll jump up. Oh, no. Oh, oh yes. no. Come oh, on, gang. Oh, no. See this no, one over here. No. Tat it by, everybody. I'm going to be sick on him. Doddy can find his way out in time for next week's Ken Dodd Show. Along with John Slater, Percy Edwards, Peter Hudson, Patricia Hayes, Wallace Eaton, the Barry Sisters and Judith Chalmers. With the BBC Review Orchestra, leader Derek Jacobs, conductor Malcolm Lockyer. The script was written by Eddie Braben and Ken Dodd and the show which was recorded was produced by Bill Worsley. Bill <laughs> Worsley.